Hola, ¿cómo están? Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, no sé desde dónde me miras, pero hoy día tenemos a una invitada muy, muy linda, muy especial para mí, porque ella fue eh, una maestra para mí en el Centro Chopra cuando yo eh, comencé mis estudios eh, con, el doctor David, eh, con el doctor Deepak Chopra y bueno, en el centro. Ella es Claire, Claire Dapp, es una terapeuta internacional de yoga y salud. Voy a leer su historia un poco porque es bastante larga y me encantaría que ustedes sepan de todo lo que se trata. Ella lleva más de 25 años enseñando yoga. Es autora de libros. Ella es una inspiradora innata. Como es también co-creadora del programa de yoga del Centro Chopra, llamado las siete leyes espirituales del yoga. Esto ella lo hizo junto al doctor David Simon y al doctor Deepak Chopra. Ella es profesora de la Universidad de Seton Hall en New Jersey, que es a un ladito de Nueva York. Ella enseña un curso de filosofía llamado Zen y Yoga, el arte de la vida. También ha enseñado fitness y bienestar a los bomberos de New York y New Jersey después del septiembre 11. Ella recibió en el 2012 el premio Asociación Nacional de Mujeres Profesionales. Ella también trabajó con los SEALs, que son eh, un grupo especial, ¿cierto? Eh, ella les enseñó yoga y meditación. Mi maestra, como ya dije, en el, centro, en el Centro Chopra, y lo más importante, una persona increíblemente hermosa. Así que le doy la bienvenida a Claire Dab. Hi Claire, thank you very much for being here. It's so nice. I'm honored to have you at the Entrenos of Sadwa. Hi Laura, thank you so much. And it sounded so beautiful in Spanish. <laughs> and I truly, and I'm not just saying this, I really mean this. I have always wanted to learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I took a little in college. It was challenging because I started later. And but yes. I hola como esta. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, yo habla español un poquito. Uh, <laughs> and one day I will learn to speak Spanish because I think it is really one of the most beautiful languages. And that was so beautiful to hear you introduce me in Spanish. I've never been introduced in Spanish before. So thank you for that. And we're matching. <laughs> you were, yeah, we within, within this on purpose. For sure, right. no lo hicimos a propósito, es sincronía. <laughs> I'm telling in Spanish, in Spanish we didn't do this on purpose. <laughs> we were like, whoa, we are these matching colors, you know. Um, Claire, my first question for you, how did you start with yoga? Well, I'll, I'll do a short version, but how I really got into yoga was in the 1970s when i was 10 years old my mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and the doctor had said to her um, if you could find a yoga class uh, this may help with your situation because multiple sclerosis is a disease a multiple uh, scler it's a latin multiple sclerosis scars along the spine And so yoga really helps with strengthening and lengthening the spine to help the central nervous system. And back in the 70s, there wasn't a lot of yoga, and mm -hmm. especially in New Jersey, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And my mother found a class, this woman, Tilly May, actually, you know what, I'm, I, I have the book here, uh, Tilly May, uh, get in touch with yourself through yoga. My mother bought this book at the end of the four week session and she, and she brought me to the yoga classes and I would sit in the back. I vaguely remember, I think I was coloring and it was actually in a department store called Bloomingdale's. Oh yeah. Bloomingdale's mall. Yes. And so in a back room and there was about 10 people and 
for whatever reason, my mother brought me. I was a good, quiet little child. And um, uh, when she bought the book at the end of the four weeks, which it was on Wednesday nights, I, she handed me the book. And I remember thinking, oh, she's so pretty. She looks so peaceful. And we had this book in our library and we put it, you know, just up standing like that. Yeah. And I used to stare at it. Now, fast forward seven years later, I'm going off to the University of Arizona in Tucson, Arizona, near Mexico. Yeah. And I, my mother, I'm packing my duffel bag and my mother's taking me to the airport and she hands me the book. And I said, oh, no, mom, I don't want the book. And she said, no, 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 take the book. You always like the cover of the book. You like looking at it, take it. You know how mothers know? Yes. It's almost as if yeah. she knew. And we went back and forth and I was a little nervous because I was leaving home, you know, exactly. going away to college. And I just said, okay, I'll take the book. I put it in my duffel bag. When I got to my dorm room at the university, I took the book and I put it on my shelf yes. and just as a decoration. And I went to college to study accounting. Yeah. I was studying accounting because, you know, that's what I was told I should do because there were, women didn't work in corporations much in the 70s and in the 80s. Corporations had to hire so many women. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it was, yeah. And so that's kind of where my parents thought if you become an accountant, you'll be guaranteed a job and you'll make good money. Well, after a year of not doing well at all in school, I'm mm -hmm. studying accounting. I'm getting really bad grades. I'm my grades were poor, really not good grades at all. And I put my accounting book down. I felt like a complete loser. I felt like I wasn't good enough. Yeah. And I just felt like I wasn't smart. And I looked up on the shelf in my dorm room. I remember it clear as day. I picked up this book. And I opened it up and I started reading it. And I had no idea what yoga was. Mm -hmm. And as I opened it, I saw, you know, yoga for your skin, yoga for your waist, yoga for your arms, uh, yoga for your abdomen, yoga and nutrition, improving your posture with yoga, yoga and sex. I mean, yoga and proper <laughs> breathing techniques. So, I, I mean, it's not a huge book, but... It's as if a light bulb went off and it's, it's uh -huh. like something lit up and I couldn't put the book down and I read it. I read the whole thing and I started self-teaching myself with the poses and I was just fascinated by it. Then I started teaching my friends. I ended up leaving school after another semester and I, I started teaching yoga in fitness centers. Mm -hmm. I was self-taught and then I ended up, my poor mom was kind of devastated that I left, you know, drop out. Exactly. I was exactly. like, mom, I just want to teach yoga and I was making really good money. And then I moved to San Diego and I started teaching and that was the beginning of a very big career for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I got into yoga. It was really through my mother and I thank her every single day for for that um and mothers know for somehow she knew giving me that book exactly she was the one you know she was the the one who was in charge to give you that you know your your path your you had to go to the university to find out that that was your path you know right <laughs> and who knew i mean i had i had no idea that this would be my life all these years later <laughs> yoga it's for everything like you said right like you discovered like in that book you know yoga it's for your skin for your posture for sex for waste for everything for everything yeah. you know? it, mm -hmm. it's amazing and i took classes with you at the chopra center and i love the way you teach because also you are very sweet and and in what you tell everybody is that yoga it's for everybody not just for some people you know and and you don't feel like oh my god i'm overweight i cannot do yoga yes right. you can. i i always say no matter what age you are what shape you are what size you are whatever your religion is your cultural background all are welcome exactly it's a beautiful philosophy Yes. And, and that incorporates so many things more than, than just a pose. Exactly. Exactly. You are one of the co-creators 
of the seven spiritual law of yoga in the Chopra Center. I remember that. Uh, tell us how this wonderful pro project took place. So I met Deepak Chopra at a seminar in San Diego. So uh, when I went to San Diego after the University of Arizona in Tucson, I went to San Diego and after for 11 years, I was away from New Jersey, you know, besides Christmas time yeah. and I would go visit. But when my mother became, um, you know, unable to be, she was not independent. She needed a walker. I packed up everything and I moved back to New Jersey. And it is here where in New Jersey, there was not a lot of yoga. And I was so busy teaching yoga, 28 classes a week. Wow. Um, some of my students in a very affluent spa, the spa at the Short Hills Hilton, had seen that there was a seminar going on, Seduction of Spirit, which yeah. is a meditation seminar. It was the very first one that Deepak ever did. And they actually paid for me to go to San Diego where this man, Deepak Chopra, yes. was leading the, this seminar. And I met, uh, so when I went there, I had no idea what to expect, but this was the, the beginning of me having a deeper understanding of yoga because I taught the physical aspect, yeah. which included also breathing techniques and being calm and relaxing. Mm -hmm. But now, when I went to this seminar, it was a deeper understanding of the philosophy of yoga and Deepak hadn't written this book yet this is my favorite book yes this, in my too this is yeah. this is I teach this this is how I live my life by yes and he was talking about this book and anyway it was there was 400 people in this seminar and it was at the Sheraton on Harbor Island in San Diego and I offered to teach yoga because there was no yoga classes. There was some people leading yoga up on stage, just a little chair. Mm -hmm. But I offered to teach classes. He was talking about giving and receiving and give a gift to yeah. everyone you encompass. And I thought, you know, and everyone you encounter. And I thought, gosh, I could give, I could teach yoga if anybody wants. And so I went up to him and I said, hello, my name is Claire and I teach yoga. And if you would like me to, Uh, teach a yoga class in the morning for anybody that wants to come I will and he said oh great and so they announced it they had to put together a, a room and a, you know a big ballroom and they announced it and to my surprise when I showed up at 7 a.m <laughs> I thought there would be 10 or 12 people yeah. there was 150 people <laughs> I was it just shocked me I, I, I and, and I I, they had a mic. I didn't think I was going to be mic'd up. <laughs> had a mic for me. And, yes. and I taught. And I taught this class. And his wife, Rita, yeah. and yeah. his sister, Gita, yeah. and Gita's husband, Deepak Singh, were actually running the show. This was before the Chopra Center for Wellbeing was in California. Yeah. Deepak was still based in Boston. Ah, oh, okay. Boston, Massachusetts area. So... So um, they were, they came and they loved it. And they said, would you come to Long Island and teach a journey into healing? And then mm -hmm. it was, would you come to North Carolina and, teach, <laughs> and Boston? And before you know it, I'm in Geneva, Switzerland. I'm okay. in London. I'm in India. And my whole life just really evolved. Thank you, mother. <laughs> yeah. This beautiful situation. And then they wanted to develop a yoga program. And so I helped them develop the seven spiritual laws of yoga program, which then turned into a teacher training. And I used my, I founded the American Yoga Academy teacher training school 30 years ago. And I moved back to New Jersey because I needed help. I was teaching 28 yoga classes a week. So mm -hmm. I started plucking my students and teaching them. And then people started asking me, to teach them. And so I did. And so I was doing that as I was traveling around the world. I got a job teaching at Seton Hall University because I did go back to college, much to my mother's. My mother always said, just get a college degree. Now, my, <laughs> yeah. you know, every time I tell this story, 
I mean, my mother really pushed me to get a degree in anything. She said, get it in anything. <laughs> and, it. Did, and because of that, I took a course called Zen and Yoga at Seton Hall that was yeah. started 45 years ago by a priest. He ended up leaving and I took over. And I've been a professor of Asian studies teaching this wonderful course using this book and my Breathe, Move, Meditate book for 25 years now. 25 wow. years I've been a professor. And anyway, but to go back, that's that's how it started with Deepak. And then they asked me to create a yoga teacher training program. So I took the American Yoga Academy template, which took me many years to develop. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so then, and I co-created with David, Dr. David Simon, his best friend, and yeah. Deepak Chopra, and myself created this beautiful, and actually I have this book, hold on, this book. I helped write this book, The Seven Spirits. Oh, yeah, I have that one, too. Yoga. And I this am. is based off of this. Yes. Now, this yeah. was first. Mm -hmm. And I really encourage, this is such a wonderful, amazing That is book. all within my nice, then. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have this book with me. I've yeah. about three of them in my house. Yes. One downstairs, one upstairs in the office, one in a bag that I travel with. I gave it as a as a as a gift also. I give I give that you know when when somebody I know that they like books and things like that. I I give that as a as a present and I said put it in your nightstand and just read it you know every time. Yeah, one principle per day. It's a beautiful exactly. guide in helping you truly lead a lead you to a successful life. You know, exactly. which is more than making money. It's about having enthusiasm towards life, okay. uh, having healthy relationships. Of course, we have to have a healthy relationship with ourselves before we can have a healthy relationship with others, um, continued expansion of happiness, creating, being creative, reaching goals, doing what you love, things, beautiful book, really. So yeah. that's how I created their program. And it was a really, it was a wonderful journey. It was a wonderful journey. I mean, being able to work with two of the best, uh, in, and I think the most influential teachers on spirituality and um, understanding, you know, the body, mind, and spirit connection with the right. universe. I mean, Deepak and David really have translated the ancient wisdom uh, so that the average person could understand it. Exactly. It, it, they are wonderful. I remember I didn't meet uh, Dr. David Simon because he, he was already gone when, when I went to the Chopra Center. But I remember being in, her, in his office because that was the office that we used when we were doing our presentations, you know, when yes. we were finished our, our journey into perfect health and we were having, you know, the exams and everything. Uh, the office that we used was Dr. David Simon. And I remember looking at his picture and I don't know, I, I can feel his presence there. He, he was, for me, he was so sweet and, you know, and, and wonderful. Uh, 15 years I spent in that office. <laughs> imagine, imagine. Yeah, that was spent yeah. a lot of time in that office, developing, creating, discussing. That's wonderful. And well, Deepak, he continued, right? He continued with with everything and, and like you said they are you know the most influential uh, people in everything that yes. it's mind body spirit yes. related right, yeah definitely it took my understanding uh they took my understanding of yoga to a much deeper meaning exactly uh, and an understanding yeah yeah so for everybody the seven is spiritual law of yoga it's a wonderful book i have that book and and also i teach you know um i teach more friends because i i haven't i don't know when i used to live when i used to live in australia i used to to teach people from outside you know but now i teach only friends and the seven spiritual law of yoga it's it's a it's been a good good help for me too then it's another book that i recommend you know to get it's mm -hmm. wonderful. Claire, you are the owner of the Academy, the American Yoga Academy. 
Tell us how it's how how is everything now that with the COVID? We were talking about that before we started, you know, uh, the interview, and I want you to let everybody know, you know, that you have a certification that um, and and also how it's working now. So um, it's been quite the journey, and thank God I know yoga and I have the tools to. Uh, ride this big wave that the entire world has been riding. Yeah. So I have been training teachers and certifying teachers in yoga, meditation, chair yoga, breathing techniques. You know, that's, you know, with the American Yoga Academy, it's the school that I founded almost 30 years ago. So I've been training teachers for quite a while and certifying them. Um, I had a beautiful studio, my dream studio. I mean, I had started in the YMCA, which is a community kind of center yeah. um, where I was teaching and was teaching um, uh, one particular student. Then I trained another particular student. Then I wrote a manual. Then I started in my living room in my house way back in the day. And then converted the basement, the cellar, into a yeah. very nice studio. It took a year. And then from there, I moved to the spa at the Short Hills Hilton. And to when they closed temporarily and they were bought over by a hedge fund, I went to another beautiful space. I've, so I went from, you know, over the last 30 years, I've had about six different spaces. And this last space was my final space. It was my dream. Yeah. It was in downtown Summit above Lululemon, so you know where there's a Lululemon. Oh, Lululemon, okay, it's, you know, beautiful. It's usually a good area, right? Yes, yeah, so yes, yes. I had the entire third floor of this beautiful old building, and it was just a dream, dream studio with a boutique and um, nice entrance area. I had a, my dream office <laughs> with a library and couches and then my beautiful glass desk. But when COVID came along for me it was uh after a few weeks and a month or so i saw that people weren't going to sign stop signing up for the summer teacher trainings that were mm -hmm. coming and during that time i also had three teacher trainings going on a weekday teacher training a saturday teacher training and a sunday teacher training for different people that could have do those different times and uh, what happened was um, I needed to graduate them because they were soon to graduate. So yeah. I went online because I wasn't going to stop the teacher training and I wasn't an online type of person. Um, but I, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Exactly. So they had to do their 15, 20 minute practical presentation. We would do it online. I would evaluate. We had graduation online. And then my studio had to close. And when my studio, I got everyone through their graduations. I had a March graduation, an April graduation, and a June. I got them through. I realized that um, as no one was signing up for the summer teacher trainings, I had 10 people mm -hmm. that had signed up in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, but other people weren't signing up because no one was going to be in a space from 10 to 2 or 10 to 5 on the weekends. Exactly. And I talked to the owner of the building. I had a 15-year lease, and I just said, I don't know what, what to do, but I can't. And he said, do what you have to do. I said, I need to, you know, to be fair to you, I need to, I need to move out and figure out my life. And exactly. so it was pretty devastating for me. I had the help of Justina, who was one of the managers, her and I in our mask and gloves, just start to taking down stuff, just taking down. And I, I and it was funny because it was, I had made my dream. This was it. This is where I was going to be. And now my dream was coming down. And I would like suddenly start to cry. Like I didn't think I, because I was very focused. Okay, I, I want to get out of here in two weeks before May 1st. And then the landlord that could think about what he was going to do. And it was pretty tough, but I did it. My garage was loaded with the American Yoga Academy. My lower level basement was loaded. Um, I rented a storage space, but I just did it. And um, it was completed. I then 
decided I'm going to just make a beautiful online teacher training. Mm -hmm. And I already had recorded a lot of the lectures. I have a beautiful teacher's portal. So I packaged it while everyone was slowing down during COVID. I sped up and I made this beautiful, with the help of an IT person, this beautiful online teacher training. And then when I started, I have a website, American Yoga Academy dot com. And I have a, you know, a 5,000, you know, people on my email list. I started telling everybody because I wasn't going to shut down. It was my life's work. And I kind of got used to the online by finishing up the three teacher trainings that needed to graduate. And all of a sudden, you know, I had people from around the United States that yeah. knew of me and around the world signing up for the teacher training. So it kind of all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> it all, it all kind of worked out with, again, you know, sometimes we're sailing the ship, right? We're sailing yeah. a boat and sometimes these big storms come and this was a wild storm for all of us, but I kept, you know, I, I was tossed and turned and I was exactly. exhausted and, but I kept sailing my ship cause I wasn't going to let it sink. Exactly. I wasn't going to let it sink. And I thought it was going to sink, but I kept sailing and I got through the storm and, uh, you know, here I am, here I am. And you still have your teacher training and right. the, the American Yoga Academy still on. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yes. Uh, and I did have the tools. I, I do thank God, the universe every day for yoga, my mother, because it's given me the tools to be able to ride the big storm and right. to, I really thought how people could go into a deep, deep depression because I, you know, felt that I could have gone that way, but I got up every day. I got dressed. I kept my head up. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. You know, the principle of detachment, exactly. you know, embracing uncertainty, Exactly. really saved my life and then least effort those two principles of the principle of allowing and the principle of embracing uncertainty it saved my life because uh you have to accept when you it's kind of like when a big wave is coming towards you what are you going to do stand there there's a beautiful quote i cannot control the waves i can only learn how to ride them I but am. what was yeah. i going to do stop the wave right when oh. we see a wave coming and we're just going to get wiped out so i was like okay let me learn how to ride this wave let me okay. learn how to ride this wave and then embracing uncertainty you know having your goals and your ideas of where you want to go and what you're going to do and if you're not sure just know that if you trust and keep moving through your day-to-day -day life um, and open the blinders of um, okay. uncertainty, you will see. Uh, and another thing that really helped me, and I had it written down, I don't see it right now. I am open to all possibilities. Oh, yeah. I'm open. I, yeah. I wrote that. That was on a piece of paper. I probably brought it to Seton Hall the other day. And yeah. I just hand wrote it on a piece of paper and folded the folded the piece of paper like this, folded yeah. it, and it could just stand up. So nothing fancy. Yeah. And it said, I am open to all possibilities. And exactly. I just kept seeing that every day. Um, oh, this was another thing. So I'm in my, my upstairs office. This helped me. This helped me. I don't know if you can all see that. Always oh. believe something wonderful is going to happen. Oh, yeah. Always believe something wonderful is about to happen. That's yes. wonderful. And that that helped me. See, I surround myself with these little sayings. What else? I have a few other ones. Well, this book, um, this book. <laughs> and then this this actually I thought was interesting. Oh, well, that's I got this the from the show. You are the universe in a stand. And <laughs> had this, someone gave this to me. And at first I thought, that's not very nice. Stop acting so small. You are yeah. the universe in ecstatic motion. Rumi is a Persian poet. Yes. Yeah. But then I started, because sometimes when you see something, you does, it doesn't have meaning for you until yes. Yes. something happens in your life. And I thought, what what am i why am i 
being so worried and stressed out, something's going to give. And let me be creative. Let exactly. me be creative. Let me be creative. And yeah, sometimes we're pushed to work a little bit harder. I mean, I thought I'm 59 years old. I thought I was going to be going into the stage where I had been training people to slowly start to take over. And yeah. then all of a sudden, then I have to work harder now. But I, I see that's all good. <laughs> you said you are 59 years old. Yeah, I'm going to be 60. Oh, yes. my goodness. You don't look bad. You don't look well, whatsoever. Thank you. And I will say that um, yoga and meditation, because yes. pretty all natural. This is it. You know, a few more yeah. wrinkles here, but... I feel good and I, I do um, contribute it to, especially meditation, to be able to calm the mind, you know, on a regular basis because all that, you know, the mind going, going, going constantly is exhausting and can definitely age you. So I'm a firm believer in meditation. And even if it's, you know, only 10 minutes twice a day, yeah, it's nice 15, 20 minutes, but I'm a firm believer in that. So, yeah, thank you. I feel great. I actually feel better than I've ever felt in my life. You know, and we all have stress. I mean, I definitely have stress, but I manage it. Yeah, that's wonderful. And everything that you did, you know, during this time of COVID and the changes that you that you were you received with open arms, even if you were crying and sad and everything you said, it, something is it's coming, you know, something good, it's coming. Well, I kept moving forward. I kept exactly. moving forward. And I was very, you know, I was, you know, I got pretty stressed out, but I just kept breathing. And I'm like, it's, I just kept self-talking and I, and I kept meditating and I would lie down. I slept a lot. I wasn't really partying. And I like to, you know, I like to have my wine <laughs> margaritas yeah. and you know yeah. so, but i didn't <laughs> during that time i kept a really clear head i went walking i you know i got dressed up every day yes. in my house yes you know, i wasn't working from pajamas i yeah. said you know dress up you know put your makeup on comb your hair you know, you're, you're going to be okay, you know, <laughs> so. That's wonderful, Claire. That's, that, that's, that's the spirit, you know, that's the attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's what will help you to keep forward, you know, and, yes, and yes. the creativity when we are open, like Deepak always said, right? When we are open to possibilities, the creativity just, you know, um, appears everywhere. And yes. And Mm -hmm. And to be still, to find that when you tap into your true nature, which Deepak talks about the law of pure potentiality, yes. the first principle, you tap into your true nature. And your true nature is that of a calmness, a peacefulness, a creative, we're, we're creative, we're unbounded, we're free, we're easy, we're yeah. gentle, then we are able to see more clearly. You know, and, and seriously, you know, the, the, the storm, you know, will, you'll land in the direction you're supposed to go. And I think now more than ever, people need this help and these tools and this understanding. Because really, if I didn't have the tools that the beautiful philosophy of yoga gives and this really i mean i don't mean i'm not trying to yeah. sell this book i mean i've got my <laughs> own books you know but um the, and this is incorporated in my teacher training yes and at, at scene hall university we spend after i teach them how to meditate uh we spend the first seven weeks we take one principle each week and we really focus on it oh, and that's yeah so, I have your I, I have your video. You have videos also. I have your video yes. from the, the seven uh, the 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 yoga, you know, and I bought it at the Chopra Center, I remember. And you also have books, right? Yes, yes, yes. You yes. are why uh, you are Where right. Where is my book? Oh, here you go. <laughs> I've got everything here in my office. Uh, yeah. but this is my number one book. Breathe, move, meditate. Yeah. Oh, yes. This has I love got that everything in it. You know, it's got the breathing techniques. It's got the pictures. Yeah. It's got six directions of the spine, 
chair yoga, chair yoga, yoga yeah. chair yoga. I learned with you. <laughs> everything. This is, and this was, this picture was taken by the Chopra Center on Moonlight Beach. Oh, okay. And I was modeling this jewelry, if you remember. Yes, Chico I remember. Jules, Carla. Yes, yeah, Rufolo, yeah, Carla. Yeah. Chico Jules. I was modeling these necklaces, and then this was a photo shoot. And actually, my back was kind of hurting. It was during a teacher training. And on my lunch break, I went to the beach to do a photo shoot for mm -hmm. her. I'm actually really meditating. I closed my eyes, and I said, oh, gosh, just let me. And it started. It was raining, actually. But isn't oh, that a beautiful picture? It's beautiful. I love that, that picture. Was, I always... Yeah, this is this is 30 years, this book, 30 years wow. of everything that I learned in a nice workbook. Yeah. Yeah. I um I chair yoga every well, every time I wake up in the morning, I do the the chair yoga movement that I learned with you, you know, on my bed in my when I'm sitting there you know, and to start my day and before even training, I just move my body that way before I train or I do yoga after. Right. I mean, I've been teaching bed yoga now and I've been doing bed yoga in bed. Yes. Knees to wonderful. chest, yeah. knee to chest, full body extension, lying down hip rocks. You know, maybe one day we can do yes. guide everybody in a, in oh, a bed yoga, a chair yoga. That would be wonderful. Yeah, because also, like I was telling you, uh, you know, before the interview, um, I'm I'm teaching now, you know, women's when they start with menopause. And that would be wonderful, you know, to have like a session for them to yes. poses, asanas that are good for women that are going through through that stage in life. Mm -hmm. And also to take the, you know, the negative from menopause and just embrace and and enjoy that's one of my motives right. now yeah yes i went through menopause and i went through pretty gracefully and yeah. really some nice restorative yoga hands on the belly and not yeah. you know if, if i got the if i got the sweats at night then i just remove things and then if yeah. I got cold, I just put things on. Oh, and then no. I, I yes. bought different clothes so that I could just take this off. And exactly. Take it on. One exactly. woman was going through menopause and she was sweating all the time, but she had on the really tight nylon pants. Yeah. I said, oh, okay. Wear those pants. Exactly. I said, buy some cotton pants, just cotton loose Green. pants. So exactly. for the next year or two. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's just not. You know, it's like you were explaining when you have the wave in front of you, if you try to stop, the wave will just come on to you anyways, right? right? But if you accept and you start lo looking for ways to cope, you know, and to continue and ride the wave, wave, wave in yeah. this case, the menopause, it would be easier, you know, resistant. It's what makes pain. Right. And now, some people say that too. Yeah, and also it's not a bad thing. And when you come out the yeah. other end, you know, no more cramps, no more, no more of this. Exactly. No. And ever actually, people say, well, then your what you know, your sex life is doesn't work out. You're no. dried up. It's like that is not true. Exactly. That is, that is not true. true. So there's a lot of myths. Exactly. Yeah. So and yeah. um, you know, there's also things to help with what you eat and exactly. the oils and exactly. you know, coconut oil Ayurveda. inside and out. Yeah. Ayurveda has that, you know, and, and that's what what's my, you know, my, uh, it's, it's what I feel that I have to do because I'm also 53. I already, I was Look at on, you. You know, menopause at 36 because they had, I had a hysterectomy, a oh. total hysterectomy. But, you know, when you're young, you don't, you don't feel, you know, but all of the sudden I start feeling symptoms and I said, well, yoga, meditation, I don't, I don't, I never get tired to tell everybody meditate, meditate. And if you don't meditate, if you are not used to at least start with two minutes and then go up, absolutely, slowly, you know, but meditate, Stay. absolutely no, take man. care of the mind, you know, the mental yeah. health is so important i mean we 
we focus on our physical health and there's the physical aspect of moving the body, which is very important. And you don't have to move your body in hard, fancy positions, exactly. but we forget that, you know, body, mind, and spirit, and the mental health is really important and, yes. and relax, you know, do relaxation techniques, you know, and, and the meditation is such a powerful tool and a wonderful technique for everyone. Yes. Regardless of, you know, uh, just like the physical aspect of yoga is for everyone, but so is meditation, whatever age you are, even a five-year-old can start meditating. And my yeah. father's 94, 93, turning 94 soon. He meditates just five or 10 minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, and, uh, whatever your religion is, your culture, Exactly. Your shape, your size, we can all meditate. I feel like should we teach everybody how to meditate real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be people, awesome. people are probably wondering what show me, show me. We take just a few minutes to Yes, yes, no problem. That would be so, wonderful. Wonderful. So usually for me, you know, meditation is a two hour lecture, but hey, when life yes. gives you lemons, make lemonade yes. in a few minutes. So just so that you know the benefits of meditation when we quiet the mind we begin to experience a peace of mind a clarity a sense of well-being when the mind is calm then the body feels good and you know what i'm going to going to do because this is great i'm thinking we're talking yeah. about it so much i yes. feel that i should just show you i wasn't really prepared to be doing this but let me just show you there's one great analogy that i love and it's called the lake analogy so the lake analogy yeah an analogy is when you compare something to something so yes. and are you able to see this okay? yes yes so, yes okay That's so wonderful. yeah i can see here it. is i just i think this will give a great explanation mm -hmm. of why we want to meditate so this is a lake mm -hmm. here's some fish in the lake this is some seaweed there's a rock here Okay, it's a sunny, calm day. Yeah. Okay, sunny, calm day, the lake. Yes. Now, here is the same lake, okay, with this, the exact same lake, okay, with the seaweed and the rock. But on this day, it's the big clouds, it's stormy, it's raining, the wind is blowing, mm -hmm. the wind is blowing sideways, and... You know, now all the water is getting, there's becoming wavy, turbulent. Exactly. The murk and mud from the bottom is here. And this is that same lake. Exactly. On a stormy, turbulent day. Yeah. And this is how our mind can get. Okay. Yes. And many people live their life like this, and you can still live your life. And, you know, you'll be a little more tired. It'll take you a little longer to manifest the things that you want. But this is our true nature. Exactly. Okay. This is our true nature. And when we calm down the mind, we tap into this. Mm -hmm. And then when we get swooped in and during the day, on a regular day-to-day -day basis, we can, we all have this. Oh my gosh, I forgot to bring the da-da-da. I've got to pick up. Johnny is sick. Da -da -da. Oh my God, I have to close my studio. Yeah. But if we take a pause, we take a breath, and we have tapped into this on a regular basis through meditation, we yes. can tap into that peaceful, calm feeling. And then we can see more clearly. We're more yeah. relaxed. We can be more creative. Okay. We're nicer here we're nicer we're more easygoing we're more kind loving we can see more clearly you can see how this is exhausting yes this is exhausting this yeah. you you are exhausted you are tired hey when you're like this you're grumpy yeah you're, you're more reactive right you snap yeah. more easily but when we're here we're more understanding we're more calm Okay, yeah. so that's the benefits in a nutshell. I just like yeah, this analogy. That's wonderful. So we're going to meditate together just for a couple minutes, but I just want to uh, show you. So a mantra, so a mantra is a Sanskrit word, and it has the essence of man, mind, tra, instrument, yeah. and tool. 
So a mantra um, is a tool or instrument to help calm and quiet the mind. Yes. A mantra is also repeated word or words over and over again. And so the average person has 50,000 thoughts a day, 50,000. They've done you yeah. know, tests on this. So your thoughts like this, and it goes, 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 see, thought, 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 all the way, you know, yes. I'm not going to take all the time to keep going. But when we introduce a mantra, we, so we have the, let me just uh, turn the page here. So when we introduce the mantra, so here we are, we're, and we're going to be doing this in a few minutes. And Sanskrit is a beautiful ancient language. So we're yeah. going to use a Sanskrit mantra. So now remember all those thoughts, thought, 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 thought. Now we have the mantra, the mantra, the mantra. Yeah. I forgot to take the pesto out of the fridge. Uncle Tony's birthday is tonight. Oh, oh you, you're thinking <laughs> the mantra, the mantra, <laughs> the mantra. How am I going to do this online teacher training? I'm not used to do mantra, mantra. Yeah. So this Thank is God. what it kind of looks like. Okay, yeah. versus because with this is we wake up and we just go from the moment that we wake up till the time we go to sleep. Okay, and so then we tap into this right that calm place. Yes, and we have the space between that space between thoughts, right? Yes. The gap. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and the gap is a term that Deepak Chopra coined. That yeah. just means that it's not a clothing store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a clothing store. Yeah. it's just that calm, <laughs> that calmness that is, that's our true nature. Our true nature is not that to be a stressed out nut, but we, we get that way. We've got so many things going on in our lives and yeah. modern technology and all of these things are good, but we need to know how to manage them and stay connected with our true nature. Yes. And so I'll teach a mantra um and by the way i know in english in english i could use the word i am you know calm i am relaxed yeah. i am peaceful but in from the language that i speak in english if i use the english words even like peace 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 see that's a mantra i'm repeating yes. the word over and over again but because i understand english it could be there is no more peace in the household there used to be yeah. peace there's no more peace in the world oh i need to go to that peace event in new york yeah. city um oh peace 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 that piece of chocolate cheesecake in the refrigerator <laughs> i need to eat that but i'm going to a wedding so you see when yeah. we use our language we can take a word that we know and it yeah. can spin off to a lot of meanings so it's beautiful about sanskrit this beautiful ancient language is that it has a nice vibration, but also um, we're less likely to spin off to it. Exactly. So let me, I'm going to uh, write the mantra for you so you can see it. So okay. it's so hum. Well, let me, let me write it here. So wait, so you see it all together. So, so let me just go like that. So um Namaha. Ma, ma, ha. So yes. um Namaha. Actually phonetically, let me just put I feel like I'm in my college students, but I have a big blackboard. <laughs> so it's so hum. That has the essence of I am. Yes. And then it's na ma. Uh, so don't worry about it. I just wanted you to see it. So Namaha is coming back to, coming mm. back to that place of my true self, where I am calm, I am peaceful, I am creative, I am brilliant, I am kind, I am loving. So because I felt that we were, Laura, we were talking so much about meditation. Let's yeah. experience it. Yes. You know, it's like, well, here, but here, here it is, but you, let's give it to everyone. Yeah, that everyone. would be wonderful. Because, That's a. Yeah. So, because it's really, 
the tool that has saved my life. I know that it's helped yes, you. Yes, mine too. And you only need to do this twice a day, once in the morning, um, preferably before you have breakfast, and then sometime in the afternoon, whether it's the lunchtime or before dinner, you know, if they say not to meditate right before bed, but if that's when you have to, that might actually, for me, sometimes I have to meditate right before bed, I end up sleeping much better. So exactly. put it into a lifestyle, into your lifestyle, because we all have different lifestyles. Yes. But you want to sit comfortably, whether it's in a chair, on a couch, you do not necessarily have to sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, they'd say don't meditate lying down, but if you don't feel well, Exactly. or your back is bothering you, you can absolutely meditate lying down. Absolutely. So, you know, please remember that, okay? Because my mother was bed bound for the last eight years of her life and she meditated lying down, you know, in her bed. Okay, so we want to sit comfortably or if you have to lie down, and they say not to lying down because you might fall asleep, but let's just come from a place of if you're sitting, you can, and even in your office, my computer would be here. And yeah. if I want to just close the computer or put it to sleep, mm -hmm. put my phone on airplane mode, and then I can just turn towards a window or turn away from my desk, or if you have a couch, whatever you want to do. So just your feet are either flat on the floor. You can cross your feet at the ankles. You could cross your legs like this on your chair. Your hands can be in a nice position, right hand and left thumbs touching, left hand and right interlace, whatever. But you <laughs> don't want your hands out like this. Exactly. You know, bring your hands into your lap. Now, there's nothing to see. Just softly close your eyes because even the mere act of softly closing your eyes begins to bring your attention inward, where your attention goes, energy flows. So as we remember the lake analogy, we'll have more energy when we stop from all the outward distractions. And now we go within, keep your teeth unclenched, your mouth is softly closed, teeth unclenched, and you can have your a gaze either up at the forehead, not in between the eyebrows, because that might give you a headache, but just an upward gaze or a downward gaze at the heart. So either or that just helps to keep your eyes still from when you start, if you start thinking. So now either an upward gaze or a downward gaze, pleasant look on your face and just silently, well, listen to me say these words, the mantra, just listen, listen for a few. So hum namaha. So hum namaha. So hum namaha. So why don't we all just say it out loud with a soft voice so you can hear yourself saying it to make sure you're saying it right. So together a few times with a soft voice. So hum namaha. So hum namaha so hum namaha and now silently without moving your lips or your tongue repeat this mantra it's a beautiful mantra it's my favorite mantra so hum namaha it's easy gentle repetition there is no need to force or to concentrate. So hum namaha. And if your mind wanders to other thoughts, that's okay. That happens. The moment you notice your mind wanders to other thoughts, gently come back to your mantra. If you get distracted by a noise in the environment, or even if an emotion comes up, treat these like you would have thought. And gently repeat your mantra. And we'll just take a couple minutes. I'll keep track of time, just two minutes. It's almost as if you're listening to your mantra being said. Listening, so hum, 
Namaha. Enjoy. Keeping your eyes softly closed, stop the repetition of your mantra. Always take just a moment to settle in the stillness, in the silence, before opening your eyes and moving back into activity. And then just moving your toes and your fingers a little bit, just reach your arms up over your head. And I always like to end my meditation, even when I'm by myself with my palms together, hands to heart, and with my awareness at my heart center, just notice this calm, peaceful feeling that is your true nature. And when you are calm, then you are able to be that beautiful, kind, loving, compassionate, understanding, kind, caring, brilliant, creative being. Easygoing, lighthearted, fun to be with. So bring your fingertips toward your forehead, acknowledging your beautiful body, your beautiful mind, your beautiful spirit that will shine and sparkle through your eyes now and forevermore. And lifting back up, bring your hands to your heart. Peace and happiness. No, Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste means I honor the light in you that's the same in me. So now you're now practicing mantra meditation. Yeah, and it's so not funny. that complicated. The most the hardest part is developing the habit. Exactly. Just like when we were children, we didn't want to brush our teeth. I was like, no, I don't brush my teeth, but our parents kept up with it. So, and then once we finally developed the habit, then we want to brush our teeth and then not brushing your teeth doesn't feel good. And exactly. so developing the habit takes about, they say 21 days, three weeks to develop a yeah. habit. Some people sooner, some people a little more time. And you start to feel, I mean, did you feel just oh, that, that amazing. was, that was two minutes. Oh my gosh. And I'm meditating. I'm like, I should have. I should have done a little movement. We should have done breathing techniques, but I'm like, no, no, no. Mantra, mantra, mantra. Yeah. Oh boy, should I? <laughs> but yeah, just no, I can the mantra. But right, you can just feel. And it just takes a couple minutes because really what it is, is you're just pausing. Yes. You're just going to pause, close the eyes. The mantra is a beautiful tool. Meditation is a technique to help yeah. our with mental health. Mantra is the tool that we use to um, calm. So good. I'm so glad. I feel good that we were able to do. No, it was, yes. Yeah. And I don't know how to thank you because really, really, it's amazing. Two minutes and it's just completely different. And, uh, and it's amazing how you can hear everything because it's not that you lose touch with everything that is going around you, but you don't take care of anything. You just leave everything there you know, and you're just with yourself and in this peaceful, harmonic 
way you know and and it's just amazing it's amazing i love meditation i i meditate every day and like you said when i don't have time at least five minutes ten minutes i will sit and meditate and and then my day i set my day in the morning because that's Absolutely. what it is also, right to set yeah. my day i set and, your day and in the afternoon at one point and sometimes yeah. if i have to drive somewhere to a meeting, I would sit in my car. I'd rather go early than later to avoid traffic. Yeah. And I just sit in my car and I close my eyes and meditate for a few minutes. Yeah. You know, if I'm meeting people out for lunch or whatever it would be. I mean, I have meditated in my car. I've meditated in the library. I've meditated on planes, trains. Everywhere. Everywhere you can. Passenger. If I was getting a car service to the airport, I would yeah. say, I'm just going to, could we just turn off, uh, you know, I would rather like the peacefulness, no radio, no, and I would tell the driver, I would say, yeah. you know, I'm just going to be meditating for five minutes. It just helps me calm my mind just so they don't. They know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One time I taught the driver when we parked how to meditate, he was so fascinated when we got to the uh, the section. He's like, do you think you could teach me? <laughs> and I said, okay, we we're in New York City. And uh, I was a few minutes, I was always early for anything, events I yeah. was doing. And so uh, I thought I'm how to meditate in a few minutes, just like this. <laughs> yeah, you know where I... I, I you don't need anything. <laughs> exactly, you don't need anything. Just yourself and yeah, the just yourself. To, to be with yourself at least two minutes. You yeah. know, don't run away from yourself, just yeah. be there. Well, and no... And know that I just, this is my favorite. Just know yeah, that wonderful. this is here. This yeah. is under, this is within you. You know, um, yeah. we can get like this, but we can say, oh boy, kind of like the eye of a hurricane. It's yeah. very calm amongst everything going on around it. Yeah. Uh, so we can go through our life like that. And when we get swooped in, because we do get swooped in, to the stress and chaos, you'll feel it. At least you'll feel it. And yeah. Then you can take a breath, come back here, and carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. I always, when I'm in the airport, I remember you teaching us, you know, how to breathe, even being calm breathing. You know, if you're late, just breathe. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're with your luggage, you know, running, just right. breathe. Running rhythmic breathing. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. that. Just keep your mouth <laughs> shut, everybody. Keep your mouth gently closed. Yeah. So it want to keep it because when we breathe, we yeah. don't have the nostril. The, the nostrils, your body is so smart. We have yeah. nostril hairs to filter out the impurities. Exactly. And when we exhale out the nostrils, the nostril hairs go down. So we really want to keep our mouth closed oh. gently and yeah. keep unclenched and we'll actually be healthier, you know? Yeah. So that's yeah. wonderful. So, I've really enjoyed um, this. Oh, me too, Claire, me too. And I'm sure I'll be going to the academy for sure, yes, the American yes, Academy of Yoga. I'll yeah. be there and I'm going to visit you my next trip to U.S. I oh, really please. want to meet you and, and see and talk to you in person. That that It's been a wonderful interview. Thank you very much yeah. for everything. And just my last uh question or which advice Claire will you give to somebody who is just starting in this path you know the path of yoga meditation eat healthy health you know so health and wellness is what I always exactly. like to call it. health and wellness education so what advice would I give well I always like to say yoga is the fitness of the future and I think that when you start to sort of shift your attention to a healthier lifestyle for your body, for your mind, for your spirit, um, I would say one step at a time, yeah. you are developing a new habit and I, a new kind of way of being. It doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't mean that you have to um, drastically change because I think some people, even with the yoga teacher training, say, well, I'm not flexible yet. I can't 
reach my toes yet. I'm like, oh my God, yoga, my yoga certification program has, and yoga has nothing to do with reaching your toes. So yeah. health and wellness, as you move forward on this path, it's not about reaching your toes. It's not about not drinking wine or exactly. becoming a vegetarian. It's not that you have to change so drastically in, in, in your life. It's just being moderate, being aware, still enjoying the things that you like, mm -hmm. um, eating consciously. I think people think, you know, yoga, you have to be a vegetarian. You yeah. have to, you know, ohm and chant and do all these different things. And the life that you have right now and how you're living your life, you can start to incorporate these things and the picture that you're painting, because you're the artist of your life, you paint yeah. a picture, you can start to paint this beautiful picture in your life and really honor and, and respect your body. And I do always say, you know, it's when you're on this, you're, you're starting a yoga class or you're starting a meditation practice or you're switching your, you know, you're starting to eat more healthy or incorporating more healthy foods into your life. Mm -hmm. um, it starts with acceptance. So accepting your body as it is in this very moment. Yeah. accepting your mind as it is in this very moment and when we accept that then we can start to shift and we can start to evolve into whatever it is that we want exactly. so we have acceptance and then we can start to evolve because we spend a lot of time resisting like yeah. well and we start blaming right oh if i wasn't brought up like this i wouldn't have been eating da, blah, 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 and, da, 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 yeah. and i didn't know and i didn't because today you know let's not look back because we're not going backwards let's look exactly. forward and it really can be great and find your uniqueness in how you eat how you are how meditation will fit into your lifestyle whether it's lying down sitting in a chair like be creative to what, how you are, right? Thank that's you what, that's very what I much. would say. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's exactly what, you know, um, we, we should start doing, accepting to accepting, accepting how we are. And then, you know, we, we will see where we need to adjust things like without eating right. our mind and our routines, you know, but it's with this calmness, you know, and this yes. harmony because in cows, we, we cannot do anything, right? right. right. More cows. <laughs> Thank you very much, Claire. It's been You're just welcome. wonderful and I don't have words to thank you for this interview. Oh, really you're welcome. And uh, I hope, well, it's nice that we can see each other and reach out yeah. to this way. Um, yeah. Chile, I've always wanted to go to Chile. And so oh, I hope you come. Because yeah. I really, I don't know why, since I was 15, I, uh, in all of South America, it's for Chile yeah. for some reason. And it's not like I knew anyone from there. Um, the long, yeah. long, great country. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I'll make it down one day. Yes, and, um, please. And I yeah, will continue I to embrace some Spanish words. And uh, yeah, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for my beautiful introduction. It was so, it's just <laughs> something in my heart is very oh. happy when I hear Spanish. Thank so it's oh, yeah. very beautiful language. So namaste, everyone. I have the light in you that's the same in me. And um, enjoy the journey. And it's one day at a time. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste, Claire. Namaste. Gracias, esta ha sido la entrevista, una entrevista más del Entre Nos y nos vemos en una próxima. Muchísimas gracias. Namaste. Namaste, Claire. Thank you.